W1VLF. Hey everybody, Paul W1VLF here back in the lab. Um, actually not in the lab, I'm over by the hand bench here. And uh, I wanted to do a little bit of work today with uh, SDR Uno. Um, I have the SDR Play Duo and I wanted to try using the two channels uh, the, or two receivers, the two coherent receivers to be able to cancel a signal. Now, I don't want the, uh, any, any sort of uh, antennas involved with this. I just want to directly connect uh, the, two, the source to the two receiver inputs. And then let's see what we can do with the phasing and, and amplitude between the two channels. And then what we'll do is we'll go out and do it in the real world with antennas where, where things are slightly changing. So I want to see what kind of cancellation we're going to get. So let me, uh, let me flip the camera around here. Okay, what, what we're going to be using is the uh, good old HP analyzer. And I'm going to put it on 1080, okay? One, 1080, and we're going to start off at uh, amplitude here of minus 73 dBm, which should be somewhere near S9, okay? So right now... We're gonna look over here, somewhere near S9. It's just about an S9. So that's a, that's an inter, that's interesting. Uh, actually, we could go up here and go to minus 63 dBm, and that should be 10 over, and it carries pretty well. All right. So, but what we're gonna do here is we're back out the patch panel. We pull the, the drive off. And the patch panel has um, the duo channel one and the duo channel two. And again, we're not gonna run this from an antenna. We're going to run this from a generator somewhere around here. Let's go over this way. I have a mini circuit splitter. And the drive from the generator is gonna come in here and then equal cable lengths are going to feed the two different um, SDR Uno, uh, actually uh, SDR Play Duo um, inputs. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with the uh, phase and, and uh, amplitude of each channel. And we're gonna see just how much attenuation we can get from, from this phase coherent and consistent generator. Uh, after that, we'll go out to the antennas in the world outside, grab two antennas, um, bring them in, you know, pipe them in there, and then we're going to see what we can do. And that's the reason why I'm doing this on 1080, because that's the local station that we'll be using. So let me uh, connect this up. So one channel of the uh, splitter is going to go into channel two. The other channel of the splitter is going to go into channel one. And then the drive... Wow, it's weird doing this in the camera. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to have there is the splitter feeding the two uh, RSP Duo channel inputs. So let me go get the screen capture system going, and uh, we'll take a look at this on the on the good screen. All right, so we're set up here, and what I'm going to try to do is um, we're not so much interested in the audio um, so I'll probably mute that just so it won't be uh, disturbing at all so let's uh, let me let me just mute okay so you probably couldn't have, couldn't hear too much of that anyway but and I'm also not going to go through the whole setup it's very simple to open this up and um, go into the receiver here and hit diversity and now what you have is two channels you have uh, the two channels are, are coming in, like I said before. Um, the A and B channels are fed with the output e equal level from the splitter. Um, so here's, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're in diversity mode. RF gain is locked. And you can see we're at 58, minus 58 dBm. So we're going to see what we can do to... to um, to cancel this one signal, okay? 
And the whole idea here is we just want a pure signal to cancel just to see how stable and how, how well this, this whole thing works. So I'm going to get it out of auto apply here, which will automatically peak the signals coming in. And now we have on the right here a phase where we can rotate the uh, rotate this. Okay. Actually, I can rotate them and, and probably change the gain to get a little bit a little bit more signal but for let's put it into auto and let it let it do it itself and we're we're gonna sit at minus 58 so let's use that number my let me write that down somewhere here it's just so i don't forget minus 58 okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of auto apply which is sdr runo's algorithm for getting the best signal to noise ratio or peak signal I'm not, I'm not really sure but and we now have control over the two different two different device uh, the received um, the received signal le level here amplitude and also phase so let's look let's rotate uh, lock up the, the amplitude and we'll rotate phase around until we find a null okay there's a little bit of a null right there okay now we're going to lock phase and we're going to go and just play with the amplitude. Okay. And there we can see that there's definitely a dip there. Okay. And we'll go back and lock. These two are interactive. So you have to be able to do these both accurately. So now they're both locked and nothing I do here is going to have any effect. So we're going to unlock the phase again. And we're going to move the phase around. And here, here's where we run into a problem. Um, and I, this is something, whoop, get that face somewhere in the neighborhood. The resolution of being able to do this with a mouse, it would be really nice, and maybe um, the authors of this awesome program could, could think about this, would be to uh, assign a keyboard key to uh, phase and amplitude and make the steps, the incremation, the increment, the increments smaller. So when you're doing with this, this with a mouse, it's very difficult to, to move the mouse because it moves so quickly. So one fix for that is going here and moving your mouse display, your pointer selector speed to as slow as possible. Now you can see the mouse is really moving slowly. But that does give us some more resolution up here, or the ability to move it in smaller increments. So let's let's uh, wiggle wiggle this baby around here, and let's see where we got it. We have a null there, okay, and lock it. And we'll go, have to go back over here and unlock it again, and grab the mouse. And let's see if we can. Okay, now we're starting to see a, a real dip. All right, I'm going to go back and lock this one. So where were we before? We were at 58, so at 60, so we're like 30. We have a 30 dB null there or so, but I don't think we're anywhere near done. Okay, so let's go back and do phase again. Okay, and it's very, at this point, it's getting really difficult to move the mouse in increments that are small enough to catch to catch that that dip over there and I have to move the mouse across the table a bunch of times to get to this so let's see oh let me turn down this radio here we got a little two meter FM coming in so again I'm gonna lock the phase and go back with the amplitude now okay and now now we're down to up oh, this is you know it's okay so you saw how deep that went for an instant but I couldn't it's very very difficult to hold that uh, I'm moving just tiniest little increments, and when I let my finger off the mouse button, it's com it it messes it up. So let me try that again. Okay, so I'm just you you can't really see me moving this too much, but I am. All right, so let's go back and try phase again. And. Okay, and to get this perfect null or as close to perfect as possible, you have to go back and forth between the two here. So here we go again. This is, and you can see that there's a spot in there that's really good. 
There it is. And back to phase. The nice part is you can lock one and not have to worry about moving it. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able with this without uh, having a key to move it in much like a, a something that's assigned to the keyboard. Without having that, uh, it's very difficult to get it to move much deeper than this. But let me give it a couple more tries here. Okay, here we go. Dip it down and you can see that there's a a deeper null there, but I just can't quite get to it. It's just it jumps over every time because it's the, the increments aren't enough. Uh, one more, so one more time and we'll see what else, what what we have here. And then we'll go out to the antennas. All right, so we had minus, minus 58, say minus 60 from, a, from a, and 107. So it's about a minus 50 dB null, roughly, and I think you could do a lot better than that. Here, um, I pull one side off and watch what happens. Okay, one side. Now only one channel is being driven. So let's see if let's see if it holds the phase and amplitude configuration when I put the second side back in again. And it doesn't. I'm going to have to go back and and do the same thing again. So we'll just grab phase here. We'll do this real fast as quickly as I can. And lock the uh, phase and go back to amplitude. So why I was showing that is because this phase cancellation works extremely well except if anything from either one of your antennas changes that you're gonna and you'll see this later if anything changes on either one of your antenna systems um, the lock goes away all right so all right, we know we had we had over 50, and I could get it even better than that if I didn't have so much, damn much coffee this morning. All right, so let me uh, let me hook up a, a set of real antennas, and uh, we'll go we'll go from there. Okay, I'm not going to change anything as far as the screen display or anything like that. Let's go to uh, auto apply here and peek it. Whoop, unlock these two. Okay, so now let's unmute so we can actually hear what's going on. Open the state up to people from East Palestine, Ohio. Okay. You know, huh, maybe our own people so first. So this, this station's you know, 20 gotta, over, gotta, right? Uh, so we're going to mute it. Now we're going to go back over here. We're going to play with that phase and gain again. Actually, I'm playing with both of them right now. Okay, so let me just lock the phase. Let's do gain. And there's a dip. And let's do phase again. There we go. Lock that. Go back and play with the amplitude some more. There we go. And we'll lock that and go back and see if we can do any more any more with the phase. Nope, I guess I had the phase pretty close to where it should have been. So what I'm going to do is we'll grab we'll grab a hold of a null here. We'll lock everything in place and watch what happens in the real world. Okay. So that's like S6. Let's see if I can get any better. 
No, see, and this is a local station 12, 12 miles away. Like that. Sorry, this is such a boring demonstration, but. Okay, I'm going to lock these two. So we went from like 20 over down to an S6. Okay, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but you see how it lost lock. And I think the reason it lost lock is because um, something between the two antennas, and now it's, now it's locked in. The phase between my two antennas, which are a couple of hundred feet apart, is changing. And I'm depending on that phase over here. These two receivers, which are coherent, to say, take phase, uh, take the signal we're listening for and, and invert it and add it 180 degrees out of phase. And it does that quite nicely, uh, aside from this problem over here, uh, until the phase or amplitude of one of the antennas changes. And you can see, you can see that happened here. Let me just, let me try turn the volume up a little bit. Well, no, nothing to re rebuild uh, railroads, roads, or anything That's like right. that. You're You're so there's the, there, okay. You can see it drop yeah. down to the point but, where the sidebands, where, where you could only hear the uh, sideband well, information and not the, and not the main person. person's voice. So, um, anyway, this is a this is really cool, uh, really really cool. Um, I'm gonna break make a quick break here. Okay, so I guess I guess this is the best that we're gonna be able to do here. Let's take a listen. Okay, this is a local station, and you can see whether it's Skywave, whether it's. Let me turn that down. Uh, but there's there's like physical jumps in the signal, so I don't think that that's um, Skywave. Although there may be some of that in there, as you can see, this the carrier is moving up and down. But now that this thing is no longer at its minimum, I could go back here and probably play with the amplitude. And find another place where it where it nulls perfectly. Up, oh, see without even changing anything. So let's look and see if the phase changed. Okay, well it looks like phase. Phase and amplitude both have changed. So, okay, so. Just kind of a, a, re, a recap here. The whole idea of this was to see how well this this uh, phase cancellation worked with a perfect source, uh, i.e., a source that was equal, always equal in amplitude and always equal in phase. And we saw 50 plus dB of attenuation there. In the real world, you can get probably get something similar to that. But that phase and that amplitude between both of those antennas that you're trying to cancel has to stay constant and this station at 12 miles away from me um, it doesn't stay constant even there or there may be something happening in the antennas and uh, a note to the authors thanks for for writing this great software um, it's just i wish there was a way to uh, to take the control of this and be able to move it in smaller increments back and forth using a, a keypad, um, you know, like up down keys and then left right for phase or something like that. That would make things a lot easier for uh, guys who drink too much coffee. Thanks a lot, folks. Appreciate you uh, watching this. This is W1VLF from the W1VLF Shack signing off.